Okay, guys, before we move on to the next uh, part of this, which will be Nearpod, I want to make sure that I go back and, because I, I goofed a little bit here. Here I am in my Google Classroom. I have my quizzes are sitting over in my drive that I've created. So if I want to put them into an assignment, it's as simple as assignment or material. Either way, so I go assignment, and down here is what I was really trying to explain. So now I can see the assessment that is in my Google uh, Drive. Um, and you see here it is right here. And boom. I now have an, the assessment in my assignment. Okay. Just want to make sure we got all that straight. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out all of my googly stuff. And now we're going to go into something that I dearly, dearly love. This is Nearpod. Uh, I started using Nearpod, eh, gosh, 10 years ago. Um, I started demonstrating it well, at every uh, KISTE and anywhere I could go where I could show it off. And I still am in love with Nearpod. I think it's probably one of the most powerful ways to engage kids. Remember, that's one of uh, Fullen's big ideas, to engage kids in their learning. I am so much a fan of this that what I do is I have an account and I freely give you the use of that account. I think in Jefferson County, they have an account for the whole district. I'm not sure. If they don't, they certainly have gotten the price down so that schools can afford it. But let's go ahead and log in as me. Um, you know how to do this by now. It's the SBSwan02 at louisville.edu. The password is ULIT241, all one word, all lowercase, ULIT241, going in. Now, as you can see, goodness, I can remember when we first started using this, it didn't look anything like this. It was just uh, little boxes. It has really grown. And one of the things that I would urge you to do, because we don't go need to go around reinventing wheels, is to explore. Now, when you explore, realize that there are lots and lots of Nearpods now. I don't know if thousands is the correct word, but <laughs> I know I've got hundreds in here. And the thing about it is, though, they're not all free, unfortunately. Now, the upside of that is if you will take the uh, time to become a Nearpod teacher certified, you can actually put stuff in here and get paid. Uh, my PhD student, um, Gabrielle, who is down at Trancy now, she has done that and she's got some nice stuff that she has put in that she gets paid for, paid every time someone goes and uses it. Let's do of search, kind of keeping with this theme we've got rolling here. Now let's see what it has in terms of lessons that somebody's always already made. This is what I want you to see. See the prices? So people have created these that are out there and they're getting paid for them. It's as simple as that. Well, here's one that's free. Let's go take a look at it. And as you can see, it does a really nice job over here about letting you understand what it's about. Then it basically will let you preview it if you want to. Notice it's 44 slides long. It's a little bit of a thing. So what does Nearpod do? Well, here's what Nearpod's claim to fame is. Is it basically allows you to decide to engage your students. Now, everybody has to have a device, but the device doesn't matter. It can be something as sophisticated as a laptop, a Chromebook, or as personal as their phones. And you basically create the Nearpod. They can put it on their, they can bring it up on their phone. There's an app for everybody. And that way then they become engaged in the test. You can see everybody who takes the test. Now, that's one way of doing it. And of course you get the data back. The other way of doing it is you can assign it as homework. They call it student paste, I call it homework. When you do that, then you have the ability to 
let them work at it at their pace, but you still get the data back. You do that. First of all, I need to pull it over here into my content. Okay. So I now have this. It's a part of my stuff. Again, over here, here's the parts of it. If you want, you can preview it. But now this is where everything down here is the important part. Oh, not to be overlooked. You can edit it. So if there's parts in here that you really like, or as we'll show you in just a second, if there's parts in here that you want to enlarge upon, add your own uh, test or assessment or activity, you can. But let me show you what it looks like. So if you go to a live lesson, basically what you're doing is you're saying to the students, you're going to be using this code when it comes up to put in your Nearpod app or Nearpod on your Chromebook, laptop, whatever. Okay. And then what happens is you take over their machines. In other words, they, they don't have the use of their machine while you're doing the Nearpod. Kind of cool. So close that one out. Student paste is essentially the same thing, just a different code. And now this time they are using it in their time, in their space. Now notice it has these, they have uh, time limits on when you can use them. I guess they do that for, actually, I don't know why they do it, to be honest with you. But here's the cool part. Looky, looky, looky. So there's the Google Classroom link. That simple. I go in here and I click on my Google Classroom. It basically comes up and it says, which Google Classroom am I putting this in? Let's see, here's Swan Science. And then it says, choose an action. I'm gonna go ahead and um, make this an, an assignment because there's so much in here that I can do that. Go. I'm going to do a title. Keep things simple. Complete the Nearpod. Answering the questions. There you go. Got it. No due date topic course. I'm going to put it in my space week thing. And here's what it looks like. That's it, gang. And now I assign it. Now, if I hadn't closed out my window, I could go back and look. Let's We'll go ahead and see if it's here. It does take it a little bit to show up. Don't freak out. See, it's not here yet. But it, it does show up. Just don't do this at the last second, is what I'm trying to tell you. Don't wait till the last second to throw this in. Um, let's see if I do a refresh of the screen, if it'll come up. Not there yet, but it does come in. Trust me. It does come in. I was going to stop it, but I'm not going to. Let's just keep going. Now, here's the coolness of it all. Come down here to edit. You're about to edit a downloaded lesson. To do that, you can either keep a copy of the original or duplicate the lesson before editing it. You know, I would do, you know, I'd make a decision based upon if, if the stuff that's in here is something that I'm going to use. Maybe I'm doing re-editing it because uh, I want to, again, differentiate it for the kids who struggle with maybe some of the words and some of the, of the ideas. So let's go ahead and just edit the lesson. It says this code will be lost. Okay, fine. we just give it another code. And now what it's going to do is it's going to bring me up to the window and show me all the things, all those slides that were in here. Pretty big, 44 of them. But now I have the ability to, I can either do, I can do a couple of things. I can move slides around. I don't know why I would, but I could. Or I can add a slide and I can add an activity. Now let's look at what some of these activities are. You've got a quiz. 
multiple choice. You've got an open-ended question. You've got matching pairs. Oh, my. So now I do have the ability to have definitions, words, or things that go together. How are you going to define that? I could do a collaboration. Do I want kids to work together. I could do a poll. How do we do? I can do fill in the blanks. And I can do what I call the old flip card. You know, turning over cards and matching them up. But let me show you just real quick. Let's do a, a quiz because you probably well guess it's going to look just like the quiz uh, setup that we had before. So here's my question. Gravity is defined as, and then down here is where I can put my answers in. look, my Grammarly is, is being very nice and saying, hey, stupid, just spelled that wrong. Okay, so you get the idea. And then, of course, what I'm going to do is I could add answers down here. I'm going to tell it that that's the correct answer. I could add a reference over here, and that reference could be anything and everything. I could go right back and pull that video back in. You see what I'm saying, how you can really differentiate this. So if I do video, I can do a search for the video. Notice it does a YouTube safe search. So you don't have to worry about pulling in videos that may have copyright attached to them. Okay. And I'll go ahead and do that. And let's see if I can find that thing. There it is. How does gravity work? And I'm going to save it. So now I have a video up here, and I have the ability, I can even time it if I wanted to. So I can now put in another question, just keep working my way through it, and I can save it. Now, my thing has become a part of the Nearpod. And so I would need to put it around, move it around in here until I find the place where it would fit. Let me show you what I think takes a Nearpod to a whole different level. Add, add an activity, draw it. Now, granted, this only works with uh, devices that have touch screens. So this would be kids sitting with their phones. This would be Android tablets. This would be iPad tablets if your Chromebook has a touch screen. So I know before you start yelling at me that it has to have a touch screen involved before you can uh, use this. But I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen this used. Oh my goodness, math teachers love this feature in the Nearpod because you can do the Nearpod as a live lesson. People then get that question live. Their answer you see, kids don't see. We'll show you that in a second here. And that way you have an instant idea of how kids are doing. Draw your idea of gravity. There you go. And we'll save that one. Did you notice I could do that reference there as well? So I could keep putting that file back in there. Um, you know, all the way through, I could put it up here if I wanted to. Doesn't get any simpler than this. Notice you can add your own slides. So if you wanted to, you could jump in here and you can add content, add web content, add activity. So again, look what I could put in here. So I can go into my FET simulations. And I can look for science elementary, I think is what I was doing here. And it, I think it has one on gravity. I could be wrong. But my point is I have a way of actually putting in, there it is. I have a way of putting in the same material in my classroom. And now it's in here. 
as a simulation that I can have kids play with. And as you can see, playing with the simulation could then fall, be followed up with a quiz. It could be followed up with an open-ended question. You know, however you want to do it. All righty. Let's now take a look at, let's exit it. If we do it as a live lesson, I click on it, it comes up, and as you can see, this is the code that you would tell kids to put on. So we're live, they're actually sitting out there in front of their laptops, their Nearpods, their, their Nearpods, their Chromebooks, their iPads, their phones, their tablets, whatever. And they have launched the Nearpod app and it's telling them to put this in there. When they do that, then it starts. In other words, they can't do anything on their screen. You own it. And you basically use your, uh, I always use my arrow keys because I find it's distracting to go up here and click around on these uh, arrows that are here. And there we go. We could talk at any point where you have a collaboration board. I can say yes. What do you know about this? So already I'm crowdsourcing. Doesn't that look familiar to you? Does that kind of look like a Padlet? Okay. And then it shows up. All right. Crowdsource, crowdsource, crowdsource. Talk about what some of the answers are. Share thoughts and all that. Okay. I'm going to move on. Virtual expedition on the next side, you'll be visited one of the tallest buildings in the world, the World Trade Center. This is cool. Watch this. I can actually spin it around and everybody's screen will spin around as well. Is that too cool or what? That is too cool for school. You getting the idea? Here's a little quiz that's built into it. Um, this is really a good catch they have. Um, I think their videos play nice with just about all devices. Or do you want it just to play on your screen? That's what it's doing. See, it's basically saying, I'm going to play this video on everybody's devices. Now, if all that noise drives your class crazy, don't do it. Just do it on your computer, which is probably hooked up to a projector. Okay. I can add an activity on the fly. So in other words, if we're getting really into something and I wanted to either add something from the web or put a question in, uh, do a draw it, I could do a slide. And when I do the slide, then all that content is open for me to play in. Now I can do a true and false. Nearpod. Oh, sorry. Yes, leave, please. Thank you. Now, to make a Nearpod from scratch, and again, I'm not looking for a 44-slide Nearpod from you, okay? It is as simple as it can be, but I'll show you another trick. So I can come over here, and I can do a Create. And by the way, if you want to use this, as I've said to you many times, please feel free. As you can see, we have folders up here of people who are using it right now. So let's create a lesson, and it's waiting for me to do something. Well, what can I do? Well, when I come over here to add the slide, here's the same stuff that we looked at when we were looking at editing one that's already been made. I can add um, content. I can add web content. In other words, I can put down here. And I'm not sure if, if I just put gravity, if, if it'll hit anything. Let's see what happens. Nah, see, it wants a link. Hey, just for giggles, let's put HTTP colon colon gravity. <laughs> it's probably going to take me to that John Mayer song again. And now I'm going to test the link. See, that's fine. But you get the idea. If you've got a link that you want to use, you can use it here. Here's the activity side. So this is where I can put things in that have to do with what we're working on. 
content. Ta-da! So now you have the ability to add all of this kind of content that they have. And oh my goodness, do they have the content. Wow. Okay, but here's the tip trick. When you are teaching, I'm kind of talking to those of you who don't have a class yet. When you are teaching, one of the things that you'll discover is there'll be a plethora of slideshows, PowerPoints that come with the textbook that you use. Some are good, some are bad, some are, why would I even think about this? But let me show you a trick. So I'm going to go click on slideshow. I'm going to upload a slideshow that came with a textbook. I think it was elementary math. And if we do equal parts of fractions and we say open, it's going to upload it. Now, it takes it a few seconds, but what's going to happen is it's now going to open up all the slides that were in that slideshow. And that becomes a part of my Nearpod lesson. I can then edit it just as easily as I edited the Nearpod lessons. The same stuff, the same tricks, okay? I can move slides around. I can get rid of slides. In other words, if it's too much, I can get rid of them. And I have the ability then to make these PowerPoints that are given to me, you know, use this with your lessons. I can now use them to the way that I want to use them inside my Nearpod. And of course, that Nearpod then, uh, I can then send it out. So it's real time, or I can send it out. They call it student's paste. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just so used to saying that. I guess I should quit doing that. Um, I, I see it as looking at it through the lens of the homework. Okay. Let's go. Is there anything else I need to share with you? Well, that was the last entitled lesson. Um, one more time, just so you, you get it. I've created this one that I used, the mass and weight. In other words, I actually used one that was in the Nearpod library. And for me to give it to them, for them to use when they want to, I hit that, I hit that. And then it says, which class? I go find my class. I choose the action, create the assignment, go. There's my title. I put all that in. And of course, the really important one is I put in the topic where I want it to end up. Cool, huh? This is good stuff. I am, as you probably have already guessed, I am a 100% fan of the Nearpod. For those of you who would really like to understand it, there is a whole section here on how to use it. You can go to a, a, a live webinar. You can see they're all over the place here in April. Uh, one of the things that I also have found that is, and they have all these webinars already down here. I have found that people who are in these um, Nearpods that are, that are selling stuff, they are some of the best people in the world. If you want to ask them questions um, about what they have created, how did you make that? How did you do that? They are extremely generous um, with sharing with you. Did you get all that? You can come into a live webinar where you can ask questions. Here's all the on demand. So in other words, if you want to see how you would use VR in the classroom, I didn't pull that one up, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Google Cardboard, all that is, uh, you know, here's the Google Classroom stuff. And then you had the videos down here. So if you want to, you know, however you learn, you can learn about Nearpod. Is there anything else I want to share with you about Nearpod that I'm forgetting? I don't think so. Oh, last thought. When kids go in, when you do that live one, and even when they do the student pace ones, they had to put their name in, okay? So that's how it gets back to you. Now, when you do that link up with the classroom, what it does then is their name is the name that is in your 
you know, student list, and it links up that way, so you get you get the data back. All right, so this was our good friends at Nearpod. Love, love, love Nearpod. The next one we're going to do in a different video is this, the Ed Puzzle. Ed Puzzle has a very special place in my heart, and I'll show you why here in just a second.